Hello. It's been a short week in the U.S. and yet somehow an incredibly long week. I don't know about you, but like Tuesday and Wednesday seem to take forever and then suddenly here we are. It's the end of the week. It's time to talk about startup stuff. So uh, the recap for startup stuff this week is that, uh, as usual, I will take you through five major stories that are impacting the startup community at large and the Portland startup community, get you up to date on all things startup -y and make sure that you're informed uh, as I do. Just trying to help you out. Just trying to help keep you in the loop, as it were. First and foremost, I wanted to start with a blog post by Devin Gaffney. And a huge fan of Devin. I was lucky to work with him a couple times at Pi, both when we, he was with a Pi company and when he was working on his own company. Incredibly intelligent guy. Full disclosure, I'm the co-founder and general manager of Pi. Devin on the Portland Startup Slack, he's the reason that Social Beer has a, an in real life gathering. He kind of started that whole effort. He's helped a number of companies in town as both a consultant and, and somebody working as a, you know, a CTO kind of thing. Anyway, Devin's ridiculously smart and he's been, you know, doing the machine learning and those kind of things. And, and I always appreciate that kind of thing, but what I appreciate most about what Devin did this week was he put out a blog post, not a social media update. He didn't, he didn't put it on LinkedIn. He went to his blog and he wrote a blog post like it was 2010 or something, which made me super nostalgic and super happy because I used to love it when everybody would blog. And actually Swiss Miss had this whole thing on threads. I'm remembering this week or over the weekend that I should link up that she was like, she was reminiscing and nostalgic about the days when everybody used to blog. So that probably kind of set me up to Devin writing this blog post. <laughs> but I digress. I'm just saying, I really like it when people blog, write the long form. Like it's nice to see them really explore topics and concepts. And that's what Devin did with this article about fine-tuning large language models or LLMs as the cool kids like to call them, but really talking about, you know, in this day and age where you have access to kind of these core foundational models, or you may be building models of your own, how much data, if you're working in AI, how much data does it take to really fine tune an LLM? How does it, how do you augment it or layer it in ways that make it more effective and turn it from just kind of a generalist into a specialist? And it's just a really insightful piece, whether you're working in machine learning or AI or whatever, like, I think it's just really important for you to read this post. And I was really happy to see that this was the most popular article I published this week was about. Devin and, you know, really how to fine tune large language models. So again, whether you're a, a machine learning expert doctorate type person, or you're just curious about AI, please take the time to read through Devin's post on fine tuning LLMs. Look, you know, I love startup founders. You know, I care about you. Let me do one thing for you. Let me send you a recap of the week every single week. I'm happy to do it and we can automate the whole thing. Just click subscribe and I'll be there for you every week with all the startup news. So this one of international startup importance, national startup importance, definitely Portland startup importance, but talked about it in the past. I, for the past decade or so or longer have had the opportunity to be part of the South by Southwest pitch competition as both an advisor and a judge really to help startups get a global stage 
to pitch about what they're building and what kind of companies they made. If you're not familiar with South by Southwest Pitch, it's an opportunity to attend the event that occurs in Austin in March every year and really share the story of your startup on a global stage. Now, there have been any number of Portland companies that have participated in the past. Uh, I believe Helos was a, awarded like a big time winner at the event one year. I can't remember exactly what year, but I definitely remember them winning. If you're not familiar with Helos, they're the ones who are building that shoe manufacturing center innovation center in old town but anyway like what i'm saying is this not this is not outside your reach like portland is building awesome startups that have garnered attention and and the ability to participate at south by southwest on the south by southwest pitch stage dorsum I think was another one. I think Dorsum, I think Leo got to go down and participate in South by South. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> Names are bubbling up. But uh, all I'm saying is that South by Southwest pitch, were I involved in it or not, is a great opportunity for you to get exposure for your startup, for you to get an opportunity to attend South by Southwest, which is a big event and, and super fun. Uh, but here's the thing, like they do have a, a, an application fee. It's not exorbitant, but uh, right now is early bird pricing for that application. So if you're working on a startup, I don't care where you are. If you're in Portland, I would definitely love to see you on stage, but I, you, you could be a, building a startup anywhere. I just like startup founders. So I want you to know that if you're a startup founder working on a startup, that you think is ready to take the South by Southwest stage, please get your application in this weekend for South by Southwest pitch so that you can take advantage of the early bird pricing. If you need to procrastinate, you're like, I can't do it this weekend, you can still get your application in. It's just this weekend is gonna be cheaper than, than later on. So uh, I hope you take that opportunity. I would love to see your company come through as I'm doing my judging and whatnot get that application in while it's cheap because you're a startup. You don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of money. You need exposure. So please consider South by Southwest pitch. So I was just talking about this last week or the week before a uh, company organization that started as the Portland Independent Chamber of Commerce, Peacock, and then became Business for a Better Portland rebranded and repositioned as simply better portland great organization i was lucky to be part of the advising team when it was founded because it was started by a bunch of startup founders who said hey what if instead of being like combative with local government we were collaborative what if startups and business collaborated with local government would we get more done? Probably. And so that was their whole premise. But they, they continue to retain that premise. And this week, I was really happy to see them release something that I'm like, this is it. This is what I rely on Better Portland to do. Because, I mean, you're a startup founder. I don't, you've got too much to do. Let's be honest. You're juggling too much as a startup founder. I'm doing a lot. I'm not even a startup founder and there. There's a lot of stuff going on. I can't pay attention to everything. And so Better Portland did this thing that is like, yep, that's exactly what I pay my membership dues for. That's exactly why I'm part of Better Portland. And what was that thing? Well, I'll tell you. Better Portland has outlined for incoming politicians folks who may garner the popular vote in the rank voting system as they take leadership positions in this new form of portland government better portland has said here's what you need to do here's what you need to get done over the first 90 days of 2025 and and here's what we expect you to get done by the end of 2025. So they've really kind of outlined this, uh, this roadmap 
for what politicians could and should be doing to support entrepreneurs and startups in Portland. And I'm not going to read the whole post. It's great. It's composed by the entire board of Better Portland. But what I would like to do is take a second to read what they've outlined for the first 90 days of 2025, because I think you will agree that it's important, but you also might want to reflect on what they've suggested and, and provide your own insights. For economy, <coughs> I will just say, I tried to read this and I'm going to, I edited it out, my flub, but uh, it's setting off my OCD because all the bullets don't start the same or aren't positioned the same. That's all good. It's still, this is still good work, but forgive me if I stumble over this because I've tried it a few times now and I keep, I keep falling off. But anyway, be that as it may, here's what our friends at Better Portland have suggested and advised that all new elected officials in the new form of government in Portland focus on for the first 90 days of 2025. One, all new elected officials must meet businesses where they are with a listening tour to hear their local challenges and recommended solutions. Refresh the membership of advisory bodies to balance long heard voices with new voices representing a spectrum of businesses and backgrounds. Fast and liberal permitting for economy boosting activity from public arts to building renovation, establish an office of small business and entrepreneurship with the following key performance indicators. Establish standards for all local levels of government, rapidly establish practical support for small business, including a comprehensive, regularly updated online resource library and small business liaisons representing the city, county, and metro levels. Now, I believe and I've, I know I've talked about this before, that there, there's already some work going with the Office of Small Business. I know Prosper Portland has kind of telegraphed that they're focused on that and they want to hire someone to do that work. So you lucked out there soon to be elected politicians. Some of that work is already going. But anyway, I wanted to kind of share <laughs> bulleted list that I literally stumbled over like five times, but you know, maybe the edit you saw is, is all well and good. So thank you better Portland for capturing those tasks for elected officials that are, that are coming into office. Thank you for being thoughtful about what we as startups and entrepreneurs and small businesses need in Portland. Again, that's why I pay my dues every single month so that Better Portland can help guide these kind of things that I literally don't have time to focus on, and maybe you don't either. So if you don't, but you like what you're hearing, think about Better Portland. Great organization for not only kind of Main Street small business, but also startup venture scale companies here in Portland. Okay, I'm talking a lot about like ethereal kind of things like LLM strategies and and politics and applying to pitch competitions. How about how about we get into some apps? Because I've got two apps that uh, came out this week that I uh, people were clearly excited about because they were reading the blog posts and clicking on the things. The first one is Evergreen Home. Evergreen Home is really designed to help you as a homeowner, take care of all those random tasks they have to get done. I mean, it's so many people, like so many people have that dream of home ownership and, uh, you know, want to be building up equity in an asset. They want to have something they own. It's in Portland. It's, it's becoming less and less attainable as housing prices tend to climb. And yet still, tends to be a goal for folks. So for those folks who are lucky enough to been owners or been able to figure out a way to buy a home, Evergreen is designed for you. It's going to help you keep tasks 
and things you need to do and deadlines and all those kind of things in order on a simple iOS or, you know, iPad app, Android coming soon. But uh, this one was posted in the Portland startup Slack and just like people just glommed onto it. They're like, well, yes, why, why have I not had this thing? So again, much like the better Portland thing where it's like, I don't have time to deal with this. Please better Portland, figure it out. Evergreen homes kind of the same thing. It's like, I don't have time to deal with this. Help me out evergreen home. And again, you may be listening from somewhere where you're like, yeah, home ownership's totally attainable for me. But regardless of where you are, this is something designed to help the home owner do a better job of maintaining their home and ensuring that they check off all those tasks and to do's associated with home ownership. So if you're interested in getting an app that can help you with that, please check out Evergreen. <laughs> this, one's, this one's a little more su superfluous. Like it's not a, it's not a like critical app. This is like a nice to have app. Like let's say you play fantasy football on a regular basis. You know, like I'm tired of losing the fantasy league. I want to be best this year. I want to dominate, but I really need kind of that ace in the hole to help me figure it out. Or like, I don't know, maybe you have disposable income and you enjoy betting on the games and you're like, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to drop a nickel on this game. I want to drop a dime and think that I can do potentially well. Sure. Sports betting, it's a thing and it's getting more and more popular by the day, which is why this new startup with, you know, former, former Nike exec, uh, at the head, really ho helping people do a better job of understanding the dynamics and the insights and giving them almost an unfair edge, really giving them field vision, which is what the app is named. So if you are a dumb jock like me, or you're just really into the sports and the, and the competition, potentially competition with rewards like betting, field vision, maybe one you want to check out currently just focused on the NFL, giving like player to player, team to team kind of comparisons, giving you that edge and insight to see who could potentially do better on any given Sunday. Between living and dying. You can you can download that app and see how it works for you. Please let me know. I'm really curious. Like I I I, I don't I can't. If you're into that sort of thing, please let me know how you like it. I'd be interested to hear your feedback, but that's Field Vision, currently available. If you're into that sort of thing, please check it out. Five things flew by just like this short four day week. Uh, hope you're hanging in there. Please avoid the heat. It's really hot here in Portland. If you don't know, the air quality is trash right now. <laughs> it's both heat and you can't breathe. Uh, hope you're hanging in there hope you're holding up and until we get the chance to chat again hopefully next week i hope to see you here next week please keep up the good work